Hello everyone, welcome to another video my Commando Play and this is another Chelsea transfer news video video for you guys. We'll I'll keep you guys up to date with all the latest news surrounding Chelsea in the past 24 hours. And I'll also be discussing a bit of tomorrow's game as well. Chelsea take on Man City in a massive clash. Both sides needing three points. We'll be discussing and delving into tactics and how we could potentially beat Man City. And also about the news about the COVID situation. Five key Man City players have had positive test results. We'll be going into detail about that as well. And the David Alaba situation. Now before I do get into it, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification. And without further ado, let's get straight into today's transfer news daily video. Now starting off with the big news of Gianluigi Donnarumma. Now yesterday I spoke about it in the first video of the month of the transfer daily and I have a bit of a news update on Donnarumma. I've got more information, I've got more detail regarding Donnarumma and um, it's quite interesting but it's not as positive as we as we think. Uh, yesterday we talked about how Donnarumma, the links and the interest is legitimate. Uh, top sources have confirmed this. The Chelsea are looking to sign Donnarumma on a free this summer to get him in. Um, Remember, he's 21 years of age. He's been, he was brought up through the AC Milan Academy. He's been playing at the top level for five years. He's a world-class goalkeeper. He's done it at the highest level. So for me, it's a no-brainer, especially when he's free. But as I said in yesterday's video, video there are some you know, certain summoning blocks. Because he's free, he's going to have high wages because of Mina Raiola, his agent. And the fact that because he's free, loads of multiple clubs are also after signature, not just Chelsea. So we have to find a way to be the club to persuade him. You know, We have to be the reason why he signs for us. Now... Essentially, now that we are in the month of January, he can now sign a pre-contract agreement with any club that he likes because his contract does end in the summer of 2021. So therefore, he is free to speak any club outside of Italy. He can sign a pre-contract agreement with any club outside of Italy, whether that's Paris Saint-Germain, Chelsea, uh, Manchester United, anyone, essentially. Um, so again, we have to find a way to persuade him. Uh, we've seen in the past some window that we are good at persuading, you know, the amount of signings that we got. Uh, we, we spent the most in Europe, the Lampard, the Czech effect. So I think I'm quite confident that we will be able to persuade Donnarumma, but that is not the issue that I have. Um, now, essentially what the source has been saying, this source has broken this news, is that Minerale could also be using this to get his client a bigger contract at AC Milan. Now, from what the whispers are, is that Donnarumma is actually quite satisfied and happy to be at Milan. So my worry is that, of course, Minerale, the parasite of an of a agent that he actually is, a super agent, He's going to try and milk the situation as much as possible by trying to get you know numerous amount of clubs interested in, get, in getting his signature, forcing AC Milan to pay up for his wages, pay up for the agent fees as well. You know, meaning that it's a bigger payday for Mina Raiola essentially. So he's trying to get a much more lucrative contract for his client. I mean, every, that's what every agent tries to do. But Mina Raiola is just—he's a parasite. He does it to the fullest, and he essentially scams clubs. But it is what it is. Um, hopefully, I, I, I do believe that you know he will be leaving AC Milan. Because the thing is as well, is like people will say he's trying to get a bigger contract. Well, let's be serious. He's got six months left. You know, if he was going to sign a contract, he would have signed it by now. You know, AC Milan are not going to let go of their prize asset for nothing. They would have obviously tried to offer him contracts six months ago, you know, 18 months ago, whenever. So I think that the fact he's left at this late means that, you know, Donnarumma does in fact want to leave. So that does give me hope in that sense. But again, don't forget, we're not the only club in for him. We have to jump ahead of the queue to get his signature. But again, I'm, I have full confidence in the club. Full confidence in the board. Now, a lot of you might, guys might be thinking, you know, why are we going for a new goalkeeper? You know, we have Eduard Mendy. And, and that is a very good, that is a valid point to bring up. Now, again, when Mendy first came in, he was in scintillating form. Like, he was superb. We had, like, six clean shoots on the bounce. He was superb. And no one can deny that. But recently, he has been very shaky. Now, people are throwing around the term, you know, stopgap replacement. You know, he's only here until the summer window, until we can sign a world-class goalkeeper. People are slowly changing their tune, to be honest. And I think that the board might be as well. Remember, he's 28, so he's not exactly young. I know goalkeepers last a long time, but, you know, 28 is not exactly young for a goalkeeper. So, the, you know, again, he hasn't had too much experience. And for me, Mendy would be a superb backup keeper. I just don't think he is... The club's number one long term, and I think that the club also know uh, the club also know this. The board know that as well, the hierarchy. So I think that's why we are looking for a goalkeeper, and I think Donnarumma is perfect. You know, would you rather sign Oblak, who's obviously a better keeper right now, because Oblak is, in my opinion, the best goalkeeper in the world, and activate his release clause of 120 million pounds, or get Donnarumma for free, who's a lot younger than Oblak, or is, or is already world class, and could potentially reach Oblak's level when he gets that to that age for free. You know, for me, it's a no-brainer. Of course, you're going to go for Donnarumma. You know, his reflexes, his handling. He's a superb, he's a superb keeper. And in fact, I don't even need to go into the attributes that he has. But for me, it's a no-brainer. We have to sign Donnarumma. We have to do our best to sign him. But what do you guys think? Do you guys think that, you know, Mendy's good enough? Do you think that he's good enough to be number one? And do you think that we shouldn't be dealing with Donnarumma's agent? 
all valid points. Leave me your thoughts, opinions in the comments section below. But moving on to the next news story, and that is on David Alaba. Now, it's not really Chelsea related, but the reason why I'm talking about Alaba is because he's a Chelsea target. We know this, you know, he recently changed his agent. His agent is now Pini Zahavi, who's very close friends with Roman Abramovich. They have close ties. So it would make sense in that in that regard. Again, Alaba is another player where his contract does expire in this summer. He's rejected multiple contract offers from Bayern Munich. He's unhappy. He wants to leave Bayern Munich. And of course, the Premier League clubs and all the top clubs in Europe, Madrid, Barcelona, Chelsea, PSG, are all interested in you know getting his signature in that sense. Now, there are some bad news for people that wanted Alaba, including myself, and that is coming from Marca. Marca is now a Spanish publication, essentially the mouthpiece for Matt Real Madrid. So do take it with a pinch of salt because... They are not the most reliable. Um, essentially, whatever Real Madrid feeds, so you know the, the chief negotiators, all the, the top people in Real Madrid, they'll basically be feeding information to these journalists. So it's not always accurate. So take it with a pinch of salt. But what they're saying is Alaba to Real Madrid may be imminent. Real Madrid has prepared the offer to close the signing soon with a four-year contract and a salary of a 10 million euro. So it looks like he is Real Madrid bound. Doesn't surprise me. He has expressed his interest in you know signing for a Spanish club in the past. I never saw Chelsea as the first choice for him, um, if I'm being honest. But, you know, it's not over. If Chelsea can end up signing him, he'd be a world-class player. He's a world-class defender who's versatile. You can play fullback, you can play centre-back. So, for me, in that regard, it's not an issue. But it is slight bad news that he's going to Madrid, considering he's a top player and that Chelsea were interested in him. But what are you guys' thoughts, opinions, leaving your thoughts, opinions in the comment section below. Now, getting on to the final part of this video, that is the Man City preview. A little preview for you guys. And there is news on the Man City situation. Now, we know Man City have had five key players tested positive with coronavirus, which is a massive advantageous boost, advantageous boost for Chelsea, of course. The match is not been called off. It's still going ahead tomorrow, 4.30pm kickoff at Stamford Bridge. And uh, the two players that we know of have already tested positive is Carl Walker and Gabriel Jesus. The three other players are unknown as I record this video, so I'm not sure. But two two key players, they're first team players. Carl Walker is a first team player and so is Gabriel Jesus. So it is a massive boost for us. And, you know, I know we're in a poor run of form. I know confidence is low. I know Lampard is under pressure, so we need to get these three points. I know it's difficult, but Chelsea have to get these three points to keep the pressure on the likes of Liverpool and the rest of the team. Because remember, we're only seven points off the top of the table, miraculously, somehow. Um, so it, for me, it's key that we actually get the three points. We have to. I believe we will win. I believe, you know, we've got Ziyech coming back this game as well. He's back from injury. Our whole attacking lineup is, you know, injury-free. They're fit. Most of our team is fit as well. I think that we're at home. Our home record is very, very good. So yeah, I, I, just, I sincerely believe we will win, especially with the pressure Lampard's in. Um, I think if he makes the right tactical changes and substitutions, I don't see a reason why we don't win this game. So for me, I'm going for a two-one Chelsea victory tomorrow. Let's hope we win. You know, it's a massive game tomorrow. We have to get the three points if we have any hope of mounting a serious title challenge and end this run of form. You know, we need to start going on the run now. Get some consecutive wins. As I said, the fact that they've got five key players tested positive for coronavirus is a massive boost for Chelsea because, you know, that's five key players for all them out. So I guess it's a kind of a situation of no excuse. We have to get the three points. So we'll have to wait and see. But I want to wrap up the video there, guys. If you did enjoy this uh, video, make sure to smash the like button. So hit the subscribe and the bell notification. Like, subscribe, comment. And I'll see you guys for my next video. Peace.